I had a request from one of the subscribers um, about one of the features inside Affinity Designer. Now this is usually a feature that most likely gets used in Affinity Photo when it comes to blending modes. But I thought I'd cover it here and sort of given you the, the background to how I see it. I don't understand it totally as to how everything works but giving you a point of departure might help. So this was Dan that asked me to do a video on explaining the blend modes. Now, for those of you who don't know where blend modes are, they're in your layers palette. They're also involved with uh, brushes that you use, but I'm gonna just primarily talk about what happens in the layers palette here to kind of explain the thinking behind um, blend modes when I work with them. Now, if you click on Blend modes here, you have quite a few of them. And let me just disable that. I have to choose something when I'm working. Okay, so you have to have an object for the blend mode to become active. So the blend mode is when you take two objects uh, in layers, which is usually two pictures or vector art, and you are going to blend them together. Now it's very artistic in its expression because it's like you're taking two paints and mixing them. What comes out after that is sometimes a guess. But if you pretty much know that you're mixing a, a red and a blue, you might get this color or green and yellow, you'll get a different color. So there's certain things that you can judge. But because we're dealing with layers where we can do an adjustment onto a particular object and then add a blend mode, it becomes very complicated. So to simplify it, this is how I think of it. I look at them in in different sections so in this year we have normal which means it looks like it's supposed to look then there's a section here it see it's cordoned off with lines uh, but to get an idea of what they do is the first one says darken so pretty much everything in that group darkens what it does is if your image has something that's dark something in the direction of black it's going to make it as black as it can be and any other lighter color it's going to try and move it towards black so if it's white it's actually going to try and move it towards black, which is a, a crazy concept. But in doing so, it, it pretty much almost removes the, the white or the presence of the white. So if you think of it, blending modes, as far as a concept goes, when you're using darken, it takes the darks, make them more darks. And everything that's lighter color, it, it doesn't want to keep it there. It wants everything to be dark. So if white can't become dark, it's going to take it away and pretty much makes it transparent. Um, in this section is all light, so it looks for the light areas. So you're taking one object on top of the other. So the object on top is going to look for all the areas that are light in the object at the bottom, the picture at the bottom, and it's going to lighten it more and everything that's dark, it's going to try and make it light. In the same way, the reverse happens. If you have something that's totally black and you put a lightening uh, blend mode on an object above it, it's going to take the black and almost try and remove it and make it transparent. So there's an interesting concept that when you use the darkened blend mode, if you have a perfect white area, it's going to make it totally transparent. And if it's black, it's going to make it very dark black. Light does it the other way around. And then overlay is kind of combination of the two, but um, this overlay section is more to do with almost kind of creating an atmospheric look. So if you have an orange over an image, it will create a kind of a hazy. Or if you have an image that's got a, a lens flare, you pretty much could you know, tweak things that, that creates that atmospheric look. So I know these are kind of big buckets that I'm talking about, like generic descriptions, but when we use them, you'll, you'll kind of see the, the use case scenario with it. So I'm not going to cover everything because I find sometimes, uh, well, first of all, I don't understand everything in detail, but when you watch videos that they go into each thing in detail, it gets to like the fifth, sixth thing and they're talking about, you know, pixels, working on pixels here, then other, and then I just, it loses me. So I don't intend to lose you in this journey. I just intend giving you a kind of a, a high level view of it. This, this one's here, this difference in exclusions, um, that's up for debate, the process. It, it does what it says it does, but experiment with it. And then, of course, use saturation and luminosity. Um, 
So I, I don't use these ones much here, and I don't think many people use it, except if you like digging really deep down. I did a video on this one, Erase. Now, if you look here at this grief, if I go on to Erase, what Erase is, is if it's on a layer above and you click this Erase, whatever the shape is here, it will erase what's at the bottom. So if you have a vector shape, um, it will just erase, cut right through. So anything above it, it doesn't affect, but anything below it, it will cut through. Okay, so you can watch that video where I talk about the blend mode erase. This is unique to Affinity. Okay, so I've got a few samples around here, so I hope that uh, Dan would sort of get the value from what I'm saying here because I'm, I'm not really answering the full question about getting into detail with it. So I have these things all over here. Let's start off with this first one. So when I pull it over here, um, where do we have this? Okay, so I'm pulling it onto the artboard. So we have this image. It is kind of gray background and it's got black on. So if you think about it now, if I want to just make the black stick out and I want the white to be transparent, I could go to one of these blend modes because this is now on top of this background image. So it relates to what is in the background image and what you are adding the blend mode to. So when you're working with this kind of distinction of, of a black and close to white or gray, if we add a darkening effect on here, the dark is going to want to take the white and make a dark, which it can't do it, so it will make it transparent, it will remove it. It kind of gets upset that it can't make it any blacker, so it will probably remove it. That's the way I think about it. And the black, it will just make more black. So I'll probably use a black blend mode here. So to find out which one, we can experiment with it and tweak it. But the concept, I hope you get that. So we're going to go for dark. And so if I hover over this, you'll see what happens. Can you see there? It's wherever the white was, it's turned that white into transparent. Because, like I said, literally can't get its way to change the white into black. So it turns it transparent. Um, and there, these ones do pretty much the same, but you'll notice at the bottom, the image at the bottom has a different effect because like color burn has a different effect on, on the gray. If this was on a perfectly white background, probably none of these would have had any effect. So darken tends to just cut that nice and clear. Uh, but when you get to color burn, it takes the gray of the background of this uh, image that we're adding the blend mode to and it does something with it linear um, we get to darken color so you see darken color and darken are probably doing the same thing yeah okay so i'm going to click on darken so you can now see what's happening it's it's doing a bit of tweaks but you can see there's a bit of kind of grayish area these letters are not totally uh, dark so you could add as per normal, you can go in and go and add curves and modify it while we're on this layer. Because what we can do is we can, on this layer, use curves to make the, the darks more dark and the lights lighter so that this blend mode could have a better effect on it. So I'm going to show you two methods. The one is if we just on that layer with a darkening mode, there's a little cog here called blend range. So if we click that open and we pull it here. The first one is the source, which is this one that we brought in, this overlay image that's got the blend on it. And the other one is the image at the bottom, which is the image of this girl here. So let me show you here. This is sort of from black to white. So you tweak it. Uh, okay, I'm not going to explain the, the dynamics behind it and the maths, but if you grab the one side, you'll see something happening or nothing. Let's go to the other side. Can you see what's happening? It's, it's fading it out. So if we do this, we can kind of tweak and see what effect it, it has. So this is just adding the, the blend range to maybe work on getting the black areas a bit more dark, but it's not doing such a good job. So I would leave that to set it to its normal. And what I probably would do is take this existing image, add some curves onto it to blacken the blacks and whiten the whites a bit more. And then the, the darkened blend mode would have a great effect. So I won't switch it off there, the blend mode. I'll just pull it in and we can see it in real time. So I'm going to go to adjustment layer while I'm on this image, this top blending image. And I'm going to go to, let's see where we are, curves. 
Okay. So here now, if I grab the curve and experiment with it, here you're going to see what happens. Okay, so if I, if I move down this way, you can see this. I've made the gray in the background a bit too contrasty, and that's why it's showing through. So just tweak with it to get kind of optimal effect of where you're going to. Just go there. Okay. I'm, I'm not giving you too much of happiness here but let me reset that I think that that should actually just be best if I leave it like that again um, I, I'm not yet to probably pull on the total solution you could probably start tweaking and playing around with I think the concept of darken is what works brilliantly so if we move it out of darken back to normal we're there okay so that's actually quite cool so if you are in um, affinity photo you have a bit more flexibility because you can start painting in masks and all that sort of stuff around the edges. But for you, I think you've got the idea of how it works. And remember that this effect is dependent on what's behind it. If you look here, you'll see it, it kind of doesn't get such a good effect because it's using this as a blend mode, but it's, it's feeding itself from the bottom. So the colors, lights and darks in the bottom image is also playing a role in this image. So your tweaking might be different yet if it, than if it was maybe over here. You might have to tweak it differently, okay? But I think you understand the principle. When we move it off, it all switches back. So let me switch that layer off. And I'm going to drag this one on. Okay, so yeah, same thing we can think about is that everything light is going to be removed or the attempt to remove. So yeah, we want to keep the black letters, so we'll go darken. So maybe we can think about it also that if you want to keep certain elements that are dark, you go for the darkened group of, of blend effects. If you want to do it the other way around, then you try the other group. Okay, this is a very simplistic way of explaining it, but I think you, you'll be able to get into using it immediately and play around with it rather than just you know, feeling totally intimidated by it. So let's we go to darken. There you can see. Uh, multiply. Okay. So these are yeah, probably, you know, if you wanted to have the tone of the flowers nicely, you could keep it there. But if you get to darken, I'm going to just crop this image. Let me just go to crop. Um, because these areas now, if I had masks that I could clear them out, but I'm, I'm not going down that road for now. I'm going to just go there and we pull it up there. Okay. And yeah, let's just see if we can do what we tried to do just now. Maybe let me choose levels, see if levels as a... There we go, I think the levels. But you see what the levels do? They bring that area back. And remember, it's, there we go. So I'm bringing the whites in. I am fiddling on the image itself. I'm making the image maybe, if we switch off the blend mode, let's just see where we are here. Um, is this the blend? If I switch off the blend mode, you'll see what's happening to... Oops, no, that's... Um, oh, I'm on the wrong one, sorry. So if we go to this blend mode and we... Let's go in there and switch off this levels. Well, I'm going to get onto this one and just choose not darken but normal. So what we've done is taken... That image that had those beautiful flowers in and using the levels, we've just overexposed it, turned it into a white because we want the, the darken to be able to clearly remove it. Okay, so hopefully you understand that logic there. If you have a background that is maybe a little bit of colors, then put a level adjustment onto it so that you can blow out the background, try and make it as white as possible and adjust the black as black as possible. And then when you add the blend mode, then you can have this transparent effect on it. Okay, so there we have it nicely. You, you now can tweak it accordingly. So we've come from a thing that's got a whole lot of photos on to taking that text out. Now, of course, this is pixelated, so you've got to manage that side of the story as far as the quality goes. Again, the last one I want to show you is, let's just move that off there. Okay, the last one I want to show you is this one, the image here. Now, if you look at this, you think to yourself, how are we going to get this sorted up? So this one now is where 
we get to use this next set of goodies, which is the lighten. What lighten is going to do is, is it wants to lighten everything, take everything that's light, and it wants to make it available to see. And everything that's dark, it wants to make it light. But if it's so dark that it can't make it light, it then, to my analogy, it gets upset about it. And if it doesn't want to get light, it will just take it away. It makes it transparent. So if we got on this now, I'm going to make the light parts light and the dark parts I'm going to just remove. So there we go. Okay, and these are all different of the same effect. So you can fiddle with them. So if we go to light, what it's doing here is taking this light area and making it visible, but the areas that are black that it can't make light, it's removing. Okay, so let's do the levels on here quickly. Um, I'm going to just go adjustment level and let's... So as we notice here, these letters are maybe disappearing. So it will appear different when you move it, as I said, over the background, because the background plays that role. It's blending with the background and being able to go. But if we want to tweak this to have it more defined, of course, like I did just now, we can go to the, what was it? The levels. And we're going to kind of fiddle with the black points. You can see what's happening there and the white points. Okay, so all we're doing is modifying the extent of almost blowing out the, the suspect black colors. We're trying to push him right to be more black. The white colors, we're getting him to be white. So that, that distinction of the black and white can be effectively be acted on by the blender layer or the blend layers here. Okay, and then uh, finally, we let's go to this... Um, I'm going to just take this adjustment layer out here. Let me just delete that and take this image to the top. Okay, we, uh, we got it. Uh, I think the, the blend mode is still on there. I'm going to just push it back to normal. Um, yeah, if we put this on now, I'm going to just try and see if we go to these overlay modes. So the overlay is a kind of a atmospheric thing. It, it will add it it works a balance between the light and the dark so it creates a middle of the road and it has a few different effects and will have different effects uh, based on which one you use but pretty much if you want to use the uh, this grouping uh, let me just get an image and just drop this over here i'm going to choose this as orange where this could be used the uh, other blend modes this overlay is when you you can use a full-on image and actually warm up an image um, utilizing it. It creates this ambient uh, kind of effect. And then, of course, the excessive effect on there, which is a nice cartoony effect. But if we go to overlay, you can see soft light looks really nice. And then we can dial down the amount of blend mode with the opacity and possibly warm up an image like that. Okay, so that's with it on and that's with it off so the idea of that third grouping is literally to to create ambient kind of effect a overall softness of effect okay so for this video i've basically rounded up what i wanted to share i think the main thing is these three areas the top three areas the darken and lighten um, and overlay areas these those are the ones if you can get your head around it you, you're on your way. Let's put this as the last one and think about it before I do what I need to do. We have white letters and we have a black background. So if I want the black background to disappear, I can do that by pushing things into the lighten group. Okay, so I'll go lighten. The black will disappear. And if I did it the other way, the white area would just become transparent because the white would disappear. So if I wanted to do something like so with the transparency there, um, I could decide to do it. So you're using blending layers to manipulate two black and two white areas, moving into black, moving into white. So experiment with it. Uh, if I come up with some other ideas and concepts that works with these blending layers, I'll, I'll put it up there. But I think this is kind of would give you a, a good point of departure. Don't try to become too technical. Just think of it creatively. Think of it as a, as a piece of art and tweak with it, play with it. 
uh, work with those three buckets of areas and experiment. So have a fantastic day and God bless.